to speak here. So I'll be speaking about different algebraic groups, and roughly these are groups defined by algebraic difference equations. And one reason why people are interested in these groups is because they occur naturally as the Galois groups of linear differential equations depending on a discrete parameter. So in the first part of my talk, I will try to give you the basic idea of this uh, Galois theory. And then in the second part, I will explain some basic concepts from different algebraic geometry. In particular, I will give uh, the precise definition of a different algebraic group. Then in the third part, I will introduce a numerical invariant called the limit degree. So to any different algebraic group, you can associate a, a positive integer, which in a certain sense measures the size of this uh, different algebraic group, and it's called the limit degree. And I will use this uh, invariant to explain a relation, to, to explain the relation between uh, different algebraic groups and uh, so-called algebraic sigma groups which were introduced by Kowalski and Pillay, and uh, so they used these algebraic sigma groups in a proof of the money manfold conjecture. And then in the last part of the talk, I will speak about a decomposition theorem for a certain class of different algebraic groups, and this, uh, this class is called sigma et al. So I will start with uh, motivation, this is Galois theory, and so, in fact, I'd like to start with a, a brief overview of uh, the Galois theory of uh, linear differential and difference equations. So, I think uh, all of you have uh, an idea about uh, the classical Galois theory. So, there the Galois groups are algebraic groups, and they measure the algebraic relations among the solutions. So, now in the, in the last decade, there has been introduced a Galois theory for linear differential or difference equations depending on continuous parameters. So there the Galois groups are differential algebraic groups, so groups defined by algebraic differential equations, and they measure the differential algebraic relations among the solutions so with respect to some auxiliary derivation. So this uh, theory was initiated, initiated by Singer and Cassidy, and, but by now several people have uh, contributed to this. And then in, the, in recent years, the last few years, um, there has been developed a Galois theory uh, for discrete parameters, and there the Galois groups are different algebraic groups, so they are defined by algebraic difference equations, and they measure the difference algebraic relations among the solutions. Okay, so I will now uh, try to give you some idea about this uh, Galois theory with the discrete parameters. I'd like to start with an example. So we look at the Bessel's equation. So this is a linear second order uh, differential equation. It depends on this uh, uh, parameter alpha. And so the, the, the usual Galois theory, uh, the, the Galois group is an algebraic group, and it only sees the algebraic relations among the solutions. So for example, um, for generic alpha, uh, we know that the, the Galois group here is SL2, and uh, this, for example, implies that the Bessel function does not satisfy a nonlinear first order uh, differential equation over the rational functions. But there is a, a relation, a very well known relation, which is uh, not an algebraic relation, but it's a different algebraic relation. So this relation here, it cannot be seen. By the, by the usual Galois group, and so it takes a different algebraic group to see this different algebraic relation. Also, you see, so usually, um, so in the classical Galois theory, would, alpha would be a fixed complex number, but here alpha is like a, a variable. So we have this difference equation for the Bessel function, and so here the, the Galois group in this new Galois theory is this group, it consists of all matrices in SL2, such that sigma of g is equal to g. And so, I'll so this is a first example of a different algebraic group, but I'll explain uh, a bit better so what is the, the meaning of this, uh, of this notation. So sigma here is some, some endomorphism. But 
Now, if we try to uh, formalize the setup here, so if you look at it from a more algebraic point of view, so what have we got? So we, as a base field, we can choose the irrational functions in alpha and x, and we've got one derivation, so we got a derivation with respect to x, but we also got some additional structure. We got this uh, shift in alpha, and so if we define sigma uh, by sigma of f of alpha and x is f of alpha plus 1 and x, so sigma is the shift in alpha, then sigma is an endomorphism of uh, our base field, and we see that delta and sigma come here. Now we take this as the, the general uh, setup. So we fix a, a delta sigma field, k. So this means we have a, a field equipped with a derivation and an endomorphism. And so we assume that the derivation and the endomorphism commute. And this implies that the constants with respect to the uh, derivation, which uh, we denote with little k, that this is a sigma field. So these are the constants are stable under the endomorphism. So in the example above, the constants would be the rational functions in alpha. Okay, and sigma is the shift in alpha. Okay, so now we want to study the uh, difference algebraic relations among the solutions of a linear differential equation with coefficients in k. Now the first thing we need is a place where the solutions live, and this place is called a sigma picardesio extension. Okay, so this is our linear differential equation. It's given by a matrix A with coefficients in k, and uh, a sigma picardius U extension for this equation is a del delta sigma field extension, L. So this just means L is a field extension equipped with a derivation and an endomorphism which extend the given derivation and the given endomorphism on, on K. And so we want to have a fundamental solution matrix in L. So there is a, a Y in GLN of L which uh, solves the equation, and we require that L is generated as a, what we call generated as a difference field by the entries of the fundamental solution. So this means as a field, L is generated by the entries of Y, and all the elements you can obtain from the entries of Y by applying powers of sigma to it. So as a field, this, so L is typically infinitely generated as a field over, over K, so typically this will have an infinite transcendence. And the second uh, crucial condition is that we do not have new constants in L. Okay, so the constants of L are the constants of K, and this is little k. Okay, and so if we have the uh, sigma picardius extension, we can also define a sigma picardius ring, and this is and just the ring generated by the entries of uh, the fundamental solution matrix and all the elements which you obtain by applying powers of sigma to it, and you also want the, the inverse of the determinant and sigma of the inverse of the determinant to be in this ring and so on. So this ring S is stable under sigma and under the derivation. And then we can define the Galois group as a functor from K sigma algebras to the category of groups. So a K sigma algebra is just a K algebra equipped with an endomorphism sigma, which extends the given endomorphism on K. Okay, so, and, and the assignment is, so R is a, a K-sigma algebra, and we assign to it the group of all automorphisms which commute with delta and sigma, 
So and all the automorphisms of S over K. But we do it in a functorial way in R. So if you take uh, R equal to little k, you, you get the, so the, the k points, if you want the k points of G, are really just the delta sigma automorphisms of S over capital K. And this uh, is, so this is a functor, and it is, uh, in a certain sense, which will be made precise later on, in a certain sense, it is a difference algebraic group, and so in particular, it means uh, that this functor is representable. Okay, but this is something which you have to show. You have to prove that this functor is, is representable. So maybe the, the easiest example of a, a, of a sigma Picard VSU extension uh, one can come up with is the following. We look at the rational functions just in one variable. So there is no, no parameter here, but still uh, it, in this uh, example fits now a setup. So the derivation is derivation with respect to x. And sigma is the shift, also on x. And the equation uh, which we want to consider is uh, this first order linear differential equation. And so it has the solution root of x. Okay, so what, what do we have to do to get the, the sigma Picard-Vestu extension? So we adjoin the solution, but we also have to adjoin all the um, elements which we obtain from the solution by applying sigma to it. Okay, so since sigma is the shift on, in x, we have to adjoin also root of x plus 1, root of x plus 2, and so on. Okay, and so this is, uh, so in this case, um, S and L are the same, so S is already a field. Okay. So this is uh, the sigma Picard is your extension, and now, um, so if, if now, now this explains very well why it really this, uh, we have to do this uh, factorial definition here, so if you look in a, from the naive point of view, so if you really just look at the automorphisms of L over K, all automorphisms which commute with delta and sigma, you see that this is just a group with two elements. So you can uh, send X, so that you can send the root of X to root of X or minus root of X. And then this already, because uh, of the requirement that the automorphism commutes with sigma, this already determines uh, your, your automorphism completely. So here the automorphism group is just a group with two elements, but still the, uh, the extension is an infinite algebraic extension. So you, so you see, if you want to have a Galois correspondence, it's not going to work in this naive way. So, so really, the, the group is two elements, it just has two, two few subgroups. And it's, so the fixed field is not going to be K, you know, if you just have this. This only one non-trivial automorphism. So you got to do something to create more automorphism. And what we do is, okay, we do this functorial definition. And here you see, uh, in, in the functorial uh, definition, the Galois group is this, so it's uh, all, uh, so it's like the, the second roots of unity, if you want. So it, it looks like a group with two elements, but it's somehow some, some more sophisticated object. So also we will see on the next slide that, so this, this group, the group of second roots of unity, considered as a difference algebraic group, it has several, uh, it, has in, in, it even has infinitely many different algebraic subgroups. So, so does mm -hmm. this group functor here, mm -hmm. uh, the way you define it depends on the choice of S to start with? Yes, so, it, so it, on, it, on L, if you want. Right, yeah. on L. So, um, could it be somehow replaced by any arbitrary thing, which is Peter Lesser? I mean, no, you I mean, that's something I suppose. No, I understand that part. But I, I'm saying that the G of R here with this functor, mm -hmm. um, could this group here looks like. It doesn't depend on um, a particular choice of your S here. 
Yes, so I mean, so S is determined by L. Yeah, so, and, and, and so let's say, I mean, S is unique up to something. There are some more intrinsic things. That's coming more. Yeah, right. That's what I thought. Any delta sigma ring. Okay, yes. is, is, is uh, well, determined well, by the equation? Well, the thing is that the equation is g squared equals 1. Yes, yeah. so... Up that, that equation... Um, well, right now, I see it as coming of course from the square leg and all that. But, um, so, so the, the uniqueness yeah, issue... Yeah, yeah. Whether, whether so, so I, in general, I think one can say that this uniqueness issue uh, it, here is completely the same yeah. As, as in the usual Picard's zero theory. Mm -hmm. So there is no difference if you do this functor approach or if you do mm -hmm. just a yeah. more naive uh, point of view. That's, that's totally the same if, if you want to speak about uniqueness. But, but there's one is might be over a larger field. Yes, yeah, so, so um, the uniqueness of L, so given the equation, so given the matrix A, given your equation, um, we can discuss the uniqueness of L, and there is some, there is some uniqueness of L, yeah, but so maybe you have to, but you know, usually um, in, in the usual Galois theory, you have to assume that the constants are algebraically close to, to get the uniqueness, and there is something similar here. But we do have some uniqueness. With I think just the question was that how is this reflected on this particular example, that uniqueness, no? Well, no, a little more general, uh, that this, this functor, uh, well, let, let me put it the other way. What kind of founder? Single algebra groups are the Gawa groups, are the single Gawa group of some equation. Yeah, so that's the inverse problem. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I <can't> mind. <laughs> but you know, the thing is that before you solve that, maybe there is a way to just characterize it. Somewhere. I mean, because that, that, that formula for G of R sounds so simple and so just purely algebraic here. Yeah, yeah, so I mean. The formula comes from the structure. It's an equation. Yeah, but then there's a it's choice. There's a choice. There's a choice there, right? But it's particularly a nasty cooked up example that it's good to present in the book. Okay. Let's, let's go on. <laughs> okay. Okay, so like in any good Galois theory, we also have here a, a Galois correspondence, and it is between the intermediate delta sigma fields and the different algebraic subgroups of the Galois group. So in, in here in this example, so this is just the, the example from before. So here we have this uh, intermediate delta sigma field M, where we uh, uh, forget the, the root uh, of x, and then the corresponding difference algebraic subgroup. Um, you have to add this equation sigma of g equals one here. Where the sigma of g one comes from? Yeah, you could use thing. Yeah, so. Um, I mean, if it's not, then you want to go on, that's totally yeah, fine. Yeah, so, so I mean, yeah, so the, the idea is um, so one way to see it is, yes, so that, um, so you have to fix, so your, 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 your g has to fix the, the all, all these elements. And, okay, so, so we have to be clear how, how is, so the, the Galois group. Is acting by multiplication on, uh, on the root of x, mm -hmm. and so um, how does uh, yeah? So maybe I, I need to write <laughs> on the board, right? So let me discuss this. But okay, so the Galois group. Um, On, on the root of x by multiplication, and yeah. okay. Okay. Oh, lights. Maybe, maybe the lights. Yeah. There's a slider. Slider. No, no, slider. Yeah. Yeah. So G is element on the Galois group is really just acting by multiplication and 
it is acting in such a way that x to the root of x plus one. Um, that's uh, okay. So root of x plus one so under. Okay, so if root of x so under the action of the Galois group, it's like this, and then. So I guess at this point you are somehow, in order to see this group, oh. Okay, so I'd like to finish the um, first part with an example application of this Galois theory. So in, in general, this, this Galois theory's uh, typical application is to prove uh, some independence results about special functions. And so here the, the example is uh, Aries equation. So if we have two C linearly in independent solutions of uh, Aries equation, then all these uh, functions, so we take uh, the two functions and one derivative of uh, one of these two functions, and then we can take all the shifts, and this, all these functions are algebraically independent over the rational function. And so the, so the idea of the proof is that, okay, so you know, so we're interested in these uh, different algebraic relations among these functions, and from the Galois theory, from the Galois correspondence, we know that these uh, relations are described by um, the, the defining equations of the, of the Galois, of the difference Galois group, of the sigma Galois group, and so that we, we know, also know that the the classical Galois group here is, is SL2, and uh, yeah. we, we know that the, that the sigma Galois group is a Tarisky dense difference algebraic subgroup of the usual Galois group, so it's a, a Tarisky dense difference algebraic subgroup of uh, SL2, and uh, we know something about uh, the structure of these groups, and in fact, this is a result of uh, Boshovsky, uh, Chatsilakis, and, and Betasil uh, originally. And so we, we did some more scheme theoretic version of it. And uh, so, so you know something about these groups, and knowing something about the groups tells you something about the, the relation. So that's really the, the crucial point. So really, the, the crucial ingredient for the proof of this theorem is uh, some structure theorem, some structural result about the different algebraic subgroups of a given algebra. Why do we have to be so risky dense? Oh, so um, it, it makes your life easy. I mean, so, so. Oh, absolutely. But is, is it a general <laughs> theorem? So there, there's a general theorem about, uh, there's a general theorem which states that the sigma Galois group is Tsarisky dense in the usual Galois group. Yeah, so this. Why is that? Yeah, so that's not too hard to prove. So um, that's. Uh, yeah, if, if you think about the, so if you think about the definition of the Tsarisky closure in an algebraic way, then it's uh, you're basically you're just intersecting an ideal, and so so any sigma Picard's U extension contains a usual Picard's U extension, right? And then if you look at the um, condition can be sigma as well. The equations then it's Okay, so now I uh, give the, the basic uh, definitions from, from different algebraic geometry. In, in particular, I want to give a precise definition of uh, what we mean by a different algebraic group now. Okay. So the, the basic objects in, right, in, in different algebra are difference rings, like uh, the basic objects in commutative algebra are commutative rings, basic objects in differential algebra are differential rings. So here the basic objects are difference rings. So uh, all rings are commutative. And a difference ring is just a ring together with an endomorphism, which is usually called sigma. Okay, so, and we're not making any assumption on, on sigma. Mm -hmm. Mm 
Okay, the sequence, right? You take a sequence of okay in, in the example. Number, yeah, so so the and the signal is shifting, so it's a differentiation. Is it always shifting the signal? No. If, if the algebra, well, it depends on what the algebra is, of course. Yeah. Right okay. Now, the multiplication is just coordinate wise. So so okay. Right, so I'm confusing. Sorry. I'm okay. Confusing. So yeah, this is an example of a difference ring would be you take the sequences in C. And the right. addition and multiplication is compo oh, component-wise, yeah, yeah coordinate-wise. So you have got a lot of zero devices right. here, and and the endomorphism is is the shift. You, sh you shift one step to the left. Is sigma injected or surjective? Need no no conditions. No conditions. No conditions at all. No. Okay. Okay. And now uh, throughout the talk, we fix a, a sigma field little k. We'll always be working over the sigma field k now. And so, for example, you can take the rational functions with the shift, like we had in the uh, beginning example. So if we have a, a difference field, we can always look at difference equations over this difference field, or difference polynomials over this difference field. And the difference polynomial ring over this difference field is it's denoted like this. So this is a polynomial ring in infinitely many variables. So it's a polynomial ring in the variables y1 to yn, sigma y1 to sigma yn, sigma squared y1, and so on. Okay, so on this ring, we've, uh, we've got an action of sigma in a natural way. So on k, we already have the action of sigma. Then we extend it in such a way. We extend it in a way as it is suggested by the names of the value. Okay. Now, if we have any set of difference polynomials, called f, then we are interested in the solutions of f. And so to make sense of, of what is a solution, the structure we need is a k-sigma algebra. So I recall a k-sigma algebra is just a k-algebra equipped with an action of sigma such that the, the sigma on r extends the sigma on k. Okay, and so the solutions of uh, this system, f of algebraic difference equations in r are just all points a in r to the power n, such that f of a is zero, small f in f. Okay, so just to, to be sure uh, we, we understand what's, what's going on, so the, um, if you look at the recurrence uh, formula for the Fibonacci sequence, then so we can rewrite this uh, uh, recurrence formula as a difference polynomial, so and to, to precisely fit the setup from before, we can choose k as uh, the complex numbers, but considered as, uh, as a sequence, as the constant sequences. So k is, uh, is constant as a difference field. And so again, we take the r to be the, the ring of sequences. Then to say that the Fibonacci sequence satisfies this recurrence formula is, uh, is another way of saying that the Fibonacci sequence is an element of this uh, solution set. And essentially, a difference variety is, uh, is uh, such a solution set. So a difference variety is the set of solutions of a system F of algebraic difference equations. So we, we don't... Uh, really want to, to specify where we are looking for the solution, or so we, we allow um, arbitrary, uh, we allow ourselves to look in arbitrary k-sigma algebras for the solution. So, and if we put all these uh, things together, what we get is a functor. Okay. So we have a functor, call it x here, so a functor x from the category of k-sigma algebras to the category of sets, yeah, is called a, a sigma variety. F is fixed, not fixed, right? F is, so, so capital F is, is fixed here, yes. So X, X depends on F. So F, F are the defining equations for, for, for X, if you want. Yeah. And so and whenever we have such a, a difference variety, we can look at it. So vanishing ideal, so these are all difference polynomials, which vanish at all points of, of the sigma variety. And this is not, so this is an ideal in the difference polynomial ring, but it's not just an ideal, it's what we call a sigma ideal, so it is stable under sigma. And so because it is stable under sigma, 
we also have a sigma on the quotient ring. So the quotient ring, it's noted like this, um, and it's called the coordinate ring of x. Okay, like this is really similar to uh, how you how you know it from a fine algebra. Okay, so by now you should have been able to guess the definition of a different such a bright group, and it's really just a group object in the category of sigma varieties. In, an, in other words, it's a, it's a different variety with a group structure. And maybe I should have said so a morphism of uh, different uh, varieties is just a morphism of functors. Let's see some examples. So. Uh, Algebraic groups are, can be considered as different algebraic groups. This just means that we consider algebraic equations as different algebraic equations. And so, yeah, so maybe I should have said, uh, so all the, all the things I'm doing are fine, so uh, I'm not adding the word fine to, to everything else. But there, there, is, uh, there would be a more general notion of difference variety. But we are only considering a fine things here. Uh, okay. Is the sigma algebraic group going to be a sheet for the Zariski topology? Yes. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll. I'll yeah. Sure, I mean, am I right in thinking that if I have a, a difference ring, I can invert an element and still? extend the difference action. Yeah, you, you, you have to also... You need to invert all, okay. the, all, the, all the sigma right. stuff. Sigma right. equation stuff. And what if the oh. sigma is not but uh, now, in general? What if the sigma oh, is not in general? Oh, sheath! Oh. But, so, and that means I can define a basis for opens. Which would be kind of... I mean, you would have to do some difference version of yeah. Of basis for open. I mean, it wouldn't be right, the, right, the right, service yeah, topology. Yeah, I, I, I it would become some of I'm sigma, just sigma sort of thing, in a yeah. simple minded way. Is, is this functor actually a sheaf with respect to that? That is, <clears throat> you know, because that's the that's the hang up in the differential set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what. Right, but, but, it, but it's not for this, from the standpoint, it's the standpoint of defining it. Yeah. Mm. So I've, I've, I've not been thinking about the, the, this, this idea of, uh, of a sheath, with which you mentioned, but so I've, what I've been doing is more with uh, faithfully flat coverings, sheath uh, approach. So that works really well. So this works totally the same as, as for in, in classical algebraic geometry, yeah. So you can use this to construct the, the quotients and to prove the good properties of quotients. Yeah, so that, that's, not, that's not using localizations. So it's sort of, is it sort of a, like doing what Ali did, you know, that if you have a, a ring with a different operator, you think of it as a, a sigma scheme? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, so these schemes, sigma schemes, so, um, like, schemes. And, and that's where you use like this faith. approach where, where you have, you look at sigma prime ideas and things. So this, uh, this is one possible approach uh, to different algebraic geometry, but it, it wouldn't really work that well in, in, for the things we want to do here. So it's really um, because you in different algebra really sometimes you if if you like only look for solution in, in different fields. So so I mean con only considering sigma prime ideas is more or less the same as um, only looking for solutions in different fields. It kind of uh, yeah sometimes you just don't get enough solutions right. to get right. back your original ring. Let's say, and so this is really something we want we want to do here. Yeah. Yeah. So we want so we'd have all kind of uh, 
non-reducedness. So we don't, like we don't we're not putting any any assumptions on the on the ring. So and we don't want to so like our for example, so in the, the really the classical stuff. If you look in Kant's book, every all the, all the rings are what they, so all the ideas are perfect, and yeah. being perfect is some kind of okay. You can argue if it's wrong or not, but it's some some condition, and uh, and we don't want this condition because our, for example, because our Galois groups will not satisfy this condition. Mm -hmm. So we have to. So the, this perfect idea is precisely what you get if you uh, only consider um, solutions in different fields. Yeah, if you only work, if you want to work with the prime ideas, that's what you get. Yeah, but it's it's not enough for what what we want to do. Can you stick to the mixed ideals, or do you need to move beyond those? As well? Yeah, you also need to go beyond that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is it page back Yeah. Sure. Ah, sorry. So, so, so your signal variety is a function, right? Uh -huh. So, what is a group object on function? Okay, so you you can define a a group object in in any category. So, so I just have to say what are the uh, morphisms. Yes. So you you, you uh, so, so so you're talking about a category of functions with the next yes, precisely. Uh -huh. Yeah. So so we we have a. And then what is a group object in the category? Can you remind me? Yes, sure. So we have a. So we have. Um, so we, we just we, we we write the group axioms in a, in a diagrammatic. Fashion. So so G is a category now. So, that, so okay. So G yeah. is G is, is a, the difference okay. variety. Let's just so say G, okay. is so G is the difference variety. There is a there is a notion of product. Okay, so this is something. Okay, so you just you have to make yeah. so, so assure so yourself that there is a notion of product. The, do the product in the functor category. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it exists. Yes, and and, and it is itself again a difference variety. And the product is, variety. is a difference variety. Okay. okay. And okay, so so a, a, a group object. Okay, so a different such a prime group is then it consists. Of a difference variety, variety G, right. and this map, call it M for multiplication, ah. and also you have the the identity element. Maybe this so there is uh, okay. So so all those actions are fine, but yeah. then you know if if I um, so how does so I like to understand how G cross G acts as a function? Get into it's that. just the dynamic product of of functions. So in the device. You mean? Just coordinate wise? Yeah, yeah, so, so just. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, so, so, so okay, okay. G times G of. So it's, it's really. It's, yeah. this is, it's the product of sets. You know? oh. okay. mm -hmm. And then the, the coordinate ring is the tensor product. No, I don't, no what, what I don't understand is what is M. M is a natural transformation, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, let's do it. Maybe with the examples, it could be more clear. So it's not, uh, um, yeah. No, no, I just want to understand what you brought up. Yeah. Okay. And maybe, so to, for the intuition, you just think that uh, you have only one R, okay? So, and, and then, <laughs> then you're. Fine, you know, it's just this. I mean, it, that's the formalism which makes things work, but it's really, really this the same uh, as as like like you do it with the differential algebra groups. Okay, it's. I mean, it's come. I didn't learn it through functors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let, let, let's look at the examples. Building <laughs> Okay, so this is the, the sigma Galois group of uh, Bessel's equation. So now we can we can make sense of it. So sigma is uh, so sigma is applied to the uh, matrix coordinate ones. Okay, so this is an, an example of a different such a point. And an example of a different such a prime subgroup of the multiplicative group would be this. But you can also take any other exponents here for 2 and 3. So 
any linear difference equation defines a difference algebraic subgroup of the additive group. So the lambdas here are elements from the phase field. And yeah, so to say that this is a, is a group um, is essentially the superposition principle. So if you have two solutions of a linear difference equation, if you add them, they are again a solution. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so in the case of the decimal equation, mm -hmm. you have this parameter called alpha. Mm -hmm. So how does, let's say, the second example, um, what condition on alpha would be given uh, with this differential algebra, difference sigma group? So if we um, study Bessel's equation from, from, our, from the point of view of sigma Galois theory, we are not doing special values. Of, so alpha is generic. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, if, if alpha is fixed, you're, no, yeah, no, you yeah, you, you can't really it shift on it. So, yeah, so, so. The, sec sorry, the second line is not for the Bessel's equation. So this this is the, the sigma Galois group of Bessel's equation. Yes. Right, right, right. Yes. What, what I'm actually what, well, I got confused, but what I'm ask, yeah, trying to ask is that. Suppose you take a uh, an H of R, which is a subgroup, sub sigma group of B of R. You know, by putting in some other sigma conditions, mm -hmm. as I think we did some earlier example mm -hmm. on the first page. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so that would correspond to an intermediate difference field. Yes. Uh, rate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't change the equation. Which is what is better in general. Okay. Yeah, so another example would be the, uh, the unitary group. So in, in fact, so the equations of the unitary group define a different algebraic group. Okay. Right. So some easy facts are that so the category of difference varieties is and the equivalent to the category of finitely sigma generated K sigma algebra, so finitely sigma generated means that you can write it as a quotient of a difference polynomial ring. And if you add the group structure to the variety, what you have to add on the algebraic side is you have to add the structure of the Hopf algebra. So K sigma Hopf algebra is uh, K Hopf algebra, which is also a K sigma algebra such that the uh, Hopf algebra structure maps commute with sigma. So anti-equivalence just means that there's a... Uh, it's equivalence of categories. Contravariant yeah. yeah. Precisely. So Michael, you avoid um, the affine, the similar groups to the affine differential algebraic groups that don't have hop, that are not associated with hop algebras. Oh yeah, so it, it's hidden in the definition of a morphism. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they're we only linear. so we only considering. You're going to prove they're linear, I imagine. Precisely. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the next theorem. <laughs> yeah. So we are only considering morphisms okay. which are given Polynomial. by difference polynomials. Yeah. We are not considering things which are locally given by fractions of difference oh, polynomials. Right. So this is what makes uh, life easier. Yeah. So and implicitly, so I did not say this. I mean, didn't say this. So implicitly, this was said when I said. Morphisms are uh, natural transformations. So morphism of different varieties are natural transformations. Mm -hmm. And it really means it's maps given by different polynomials. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I mean, this, this, uh, this approach, it really allows you to translate geometry and algebra totally in a direct fashion without worrying about the yeah. sheaves and points and uh, Okay, so now the third part, I will introduce this uh, numerical invariant and uh, compare the different algebraic groups to the algebraic sigma groups of Relay. Okay, so like, like we said, so any different algebraic group is isomorphic to a different algebraic subgroup of some general linear group. Okay. And uh, so it's. What kind of isomorphism are you talking about? Isomorphism of different sigma. algebraic groups. Sigma polynomial so, uh, coordinate functions. Yeah. Given by different polynomials. So it, it's kind of surprising. I mean, the, mul the multiplication is allowed 
is allowed to be given by difference polynomials. So you can write, even you can write down some examples, but the multiplication is given by difference polynomials and not just by polynomials. But you always know you can find some isomorphism which will make the multiplication into the usual multiplication in GLN. Yeah. Yeah. In particular, given by mm -hmm. polynomials, not just difference polynomials. Okay. Uh, what? Okay. So, so, so this statement is about functions. Yeah, you can see it as a statement it's about factors, yeah. It's zero half. It is. Yeah. Or well, you're just uh, you know, asking for my intuition of what, what groups are in uh, what I know about GLN. No, but I, I they think maybe, the, no, no, maybe no, go no, back. The mission before. The, well, the, the AI equivalents. No, 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 it's, 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 the natural yeah, transformations take course the fund of actual no, it wasn't we're talking of a factual K sigma algebra. What a sigma algebra group is, it is supposed to be a group object in the functor category of a sigma varieties. Oh, okay. But now so when you have the first fact. Okay. It's anti equivalent to a category of sigma generating sigma algebra. Okay. So the morphisms so, there are sigma, sigma morphisms. Sigma, sigma morphism, finite generated sigma generated k sigma algebras with sigma morphisms. That's right. Yeah. And they're being equivalent, saying that a group object in the, as a functor is the same as a k sigma algebra, and a natural transformation corresponds to a sigma map. You, you need to show. Right, so what, what, is, what correspond to a uh, sigma sigma algebra group? Yeah, so if, sigma if you add, algebra. If you add the group. So in the first statement. So in the, in the first statement, so, uh, so a sigma variety is really result. just the same thing. Does it respect group structure? Yes. By yes. definition. The, well, by definition. The, the equivalence of categories, you mean. And I equivalent. Second statement. It's the same. So morphisms are also preserved. Natural transformations yeah. and functors correspond yeah. to sigma morphisms. Yeah, but then you're you're, you're getting into the, the the product here. Yeah. And, right. So he has to prove uh, that right. the category of finally right. sigma generated k sigma algebras has a fiber product. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. built into mm -hmm. the definition. Though. Yeah. You, you you need to check the the product. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, and so, yeah. So why do you lose the groups that live uh, on, say, elliptic curves? Because of course, the if you if you, you know, if you add a difference equation, you're going to lose some of the points. So right. at that point, once you've removed at least a point from an elliptic curve, now it lives in an affine variety. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. So if it, if it's affine, that that, uh, be that, that should be okay. So why, but why? It's do, not. But, but uh, it's certainly not. It's, it's not linear, of no, course, no. so it's not in, in And the reason is they have all those denominators. You don't have a homological uh, attached to such a thing. Yeah, maybe it's, it's with the, uh, he's built in with the multiplication, category. with the morphism. Yeah, it's, it's a broader I mean, category. So yeah. When you've got reactivity, it's not. Interesting to see. Yeah, that's sort of thing. Yeah. But that would be a more general. Okay. Thing. Yeah. So so fix it. So okay. Now we know. So we we start with any different such bright group G, and so from the theorem we know we can embed it into some some GLN. So this means we have an the defining ideal of G. Now it's an ideal. It's a difference ideal in the coordinate ring of GLN. The coordinate ring of GLN. So is is given like this. So X is an n times n matrix of sigma indeterminates. And now if we intersect the defining ideal i of g with the difference equations up to order i for any fixed i, then this ideal defines an algebraic subgroup of GLN to the power i plus 1. And we denote this algebraic group by what is g of i. So this is what we call the, the eth order Chavisky closer of G. How do you know the uh, multiplication uh, that stays inside? So this... Uh, Isn't it that in GLN? 
So this this uh, this no, is a matrix multiplication. Why this is a subgroup? You mean you're asking why GI is a subgroup of GLN to the power i plus one? So one one reason to see this is so i of g is a Hopf ideal. Yes. And if you intersect and and this is a Hopf sub algebra, if you intersect the Hopf ideal with the Hopf sub algebra. What I'm saying is that in your g when you do multiplication. Mm -hmm. Involving the expression of the order of i, you may actually need the higher point. order things. I think the content of the statement that this is an embedding That's is right. that the whatever the multiplication rule was on G, it becomes matrix multiplication in GLN. Yes. 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 Variables. Just as you the order. So no, but boundary in GLN has nothing about order here. So you mean you, you should assume so assume that G is a difference algebraic subgroup of GLN. Yeah. Okay, assume G is a difference algebraic subgroup of GLN. That's fine. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Because we know it's isomorphic to this and then which is the meaning of fixed and basic. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And then forget the original source. Okay, and so then we got this these projections. From the i-th order closure to the i minus i order closure. So, so is the theorem there something like the Pillay theorem on the different differential algebra groups? It's not. It's not that hard. It's it's no. it's quite easy to prove uh, yeah. to prove this. It goes back to my paper. I'm mm -hmm. sure. Which Pillay theorem? Which one? I mean, well, that that um, that differential algebra groups are algebraic groups. Aren't algebraic groups embeddable? In yeah, embeddable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but so, but we're just speaking about affine things. Yeah. Okay. Affine. Everything is affine. So in Bilet's theorem, you have something yeah, more general, right? Okay. So I have no idea how. No, it's not a It's anti equivalent to something that's affine. Yeah. Think of the affine thing. Well, it's representable, so it, by an algebra, so it's really a fine. Yeah? It's a half algebra. It's yeah. Sigma half algebra. Yeah. So you have, you, you have generators, so this is all coordinates or yeah. in the affine space. No, but the yeah. definition is very up. Okay. Okay, so we got this projection. A set of life translates generates a finite dimensional vector space. Gives you a linear representation, and then you work in general linear group. Because he's got to because that's, a, that's important. He does. He has to construct quotients. Yeah, yeah. But we, we can we can discuss it later, okay? So yes, I think you eventually you will be convinced that it's the good way to do it. There's no other way to to do it, okay? Okay. So the okay. So now consider the okay. So we have these projections between the Tarski closures, and then one can show that the degree of these projections, uh, so in, in fact one can show that the sequence of these degrees is, uh, is non-increasing, so it eventually stabilizes. Can you define degree here? So the degree, so this is a morphism of algebraic groups, and the degree of this map is just the, the size of the, of, fi of the fiber. So any fiber of a point has the same size, and you call this the degree, okay? And then, so, so in, fa in fact, this, the sequence stabilizes, so the limit is the limit exists trivially, and uh, and this this limit then is called the limit degree. Okay, and you can show that it does not depend on the chosen embedding, so it's really a, an invariant of G. And so, for those with a background in in uh, different algebra, so the limit degree. Is originally uh, an invariant for uh, difference field extensions. So this is kind of some kind of a regularity. Yeah, if you if you want. Yeah, yeah. And uh, 
So in, in the Galois correspondence, then one can show that the limit degree of, of the Galois group is the same as the limit degree of the field extension. When you say it exists, you mean it's finite? The limit exists. I mean, it could well, it could it be you does. know it, it might. Doesn't. But it doesn't. Yeah. It, yeah, but, but, I, in, in fact, so the so the, the sequence uh, it it stabilizes. Yeah, it, 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 it is constant. It is eventually constant. Okay, so there's right, right. it's, it's an integer. It's yeah. it's constant. Okay, it's a non-decreasing It's a non-increasing sequence of integers. Right. It stabilizes. Okay. Okay, so let's let's see some examples. That's a oh. Is this true also for differential integrals? Do you know that you have this stabilization? Yeah, I think the, that this is kind of different. So I think in, in, in differential algebra that's that's kind of different. Uh, in differential algebra, it should always eventually stabilize to one. Yeah. That's because once you've kind gone of. past the point. So the, the point where it stabilizes is once you have gone past yes, all the places where you problem. had new where you had new generators and past all the places where you had new equations. But the thing is that in differential algebra, if you take one more step, all of the further derivatives are linear in previous states. You talked states. about one equation, you mean the one or more I mean a system, right? System, sure. Yeah. But finite system. Yeah, finite system. Yeah, finite system. Huh. So after okay. you prolong past all the yeah. derivatives that are mentioned in your system. After that, the derivatives of your generators are so going to be linear. So you're finally generated. Uh, yeah. Uh, That's why I said it was some regularity. Yeah. Yeah. But in difference, so, so in differential, it's going to always end up being one eventually, but in difference algebra, the degrees don't drop. So um, I think this, is, don't for, get this is for ordinary only? Uh, I don't know. We can generalize to partial, but it's messy. Oh, okay. I mean, then you'll look at this problem. Okay, so that would be an example of uh, computation of the limit degree. So if you have a, a different algebraic subgroup of uh, the multiplicative group defined by all this, uh, okay, by this equation, mm -hmm. then the limit degree is the is beta n. It's the last uh, exponent. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's what I understand. So until you've gotten to alpha n. The degrees might be doing funny things, right. but once you've gotten to beta to alpha n, the degree of the next person over the previous people will always be exactly beta n. So if you have a linear difference equation, then here the here the limit degree is one you know, because you don't. It's like yeah, it's like Alice said. So if you get something linear, then. Okay, so now I'd like to explain the connection to the so-called algebraic sigma groups, which were introduced by Kowalski and in Billet, and they, they used them in, uh, in the proof of a uh, Manu Manfo conjecture. <coughs> and so an algebraic sigma group is just an algebraic group together with a morphism of algebraic groups, and uh, it goes from G to this uh, twist of G. So this, this twist of G is uh, the uh, Algebraic group which you ex which you obtain from G by base extending the base field with the endomorphism sigma. Okay. It's different from sigma algebraic group. Yeah. Yes, so this is really an algebraic group with something additional. So this is uh, some kind of a. Uh, okay, so the next the theorem Wait. compares the two things. But uh, in, in Kowalski-Pillay, you do have things living on limited curves in a given variety. Yes, yes. So, so the, the question is whether you put off a fine or not. Okay, so in their, or, uh, of course, so in their original definition, they don't put a fine. Okay, and so... Uh, so you're saying the but, category of algebraic sigma groups on a fine varieties yes. right. is equivalent to... Yes, it. yes. Okay, yeah, to be precise, they may be actually the category of a fine algebraic sigma groups. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Precisely. And so this is equivalent to the category of sigma algebraic groups 
of limit degree one. And so I also added the sigma dimension zero to, to, yeah. so you can get a better feeling like, like these groups are really small compared to the, uh, compared to a general difference algebraic group. But it, it's a general effect that the, a difference algebraic group of, uh, of finite limit degree 